The girl who was bullied by her classmates decides to take revenge by sending cursed calls. How will they survive when death is calling them? Stay tuned to find out. The movie begins with a girl looking at a cage of chickens, in which all the white chickens are bullying a brown one. After observing the scene for a while, she opens the cage and picks up the brown chicken as all the other runs away after getting freedom. She slowly turns around and finds a girl hanging by the ceiling. She moves toward the dead girl and as she is almost there she receives a message that reads. Death exemption by forwarding the message. The camera cuts to a girl named Asuka, who is getting bullied by her classmates as they hit her with the duster and throw water at her, after locking her in the bathroom. Sometime later we come to learn that Asuka's classmates are going to Busan, South Korea by ship for their graduation trip. Students are permitted to take their phones for the trip so they can use them to take memorable pictures and videos of the trip. Amiri, one of the students is messaging someone on her mobile phone when other girls come to her and tease her about having a boyfriend. Other students are vlogging their trip and talking happily to each other. On the other side, Asuka is seen sitting alone in a room as she looks at the group picture of her classmates. She talks to Pam a girl who hanged herself because of bullying and says they are all scared after she hanged herself. She thought that everybody realized they made a big mistake by bullying but she was wrong about them. They are scared because once this thing is discovered they would be exposed. The day after Pam hanged herself, they started joking and left the incident aside like Pam never existed. She says it shouldn't be like this, and she can't stand this. Back at the ship, all the students are seen sitting in a room as one of the students tells them a horror story about the time his sister went on a trip and was haunted there. After hearing the story the girls are scared while the boys just laugh at them being scared. In all the chaos, they notice a timid boy named Sunichi laughing and starts pushing for laughing. As they are bullying the boy, the light flickers and the room suddenly gets dark as the electricity cuts out. A cell phone starts ringing, and one of the girls points out that Azusa's phone is ringing even though she claims it is not her ringtone. Nevertheless, she goes to pick up her phone but the other person cuts the call after saying, good for nothing. Azusa is confused by the call as everyone is waiting to know who called her, so a boy comes forward and checks her phone. He tells her that she called herself, and the call receiving time is also a few hours from the current time. As he is still holding the phone, Suddenly a picture of a girl hanging by the rope appears on the phone. After looking at the picture, everyone thinks the picture is similar to how Pam died by hanging herself, and they even match it to confirm. They discuss the possibility of the picture being cursed, but Azusa says she doesn't believe this. The next morning, they reach South Korea and as they get off the ship, their teacher Sonoda warns them to not wander around. Yoshitaka, their other teacher gathers them and tells them that he will repeat the game rules once again. He says that their game is finding roads in cross country, and they have 13 marks to find. He asks them to take pictures with Mox and then moves to finals. While he is giving instructions, Amiri receives a text from her boyfriend Jinwoo, asking her to turn her head. When she looks toward the door she finds her deaf boyfriend standing there. He signs to her that he was worried about her because her last email looked gloomy. He tells her about his student Saya, who is with him but before they could talk further, Amiri's teacher asks all of them to go, so she says goodbye to her boyfriend. Soon after that, their teacher permits them to go, and all students scatter around the town. They look around in the market for a while and without anyone noticing Azusa is separated from her group. The girls soon realize that Azusa is not with them so they start to look for her, while she is also trying to search for her friends. While still searching for her friends, Azusa calls her friends, and when they don't pick up she says, good for nothing, which instantly reminds her of what she heard at that weird phone call. As she is standing by an alley, she hears someone whisper her name. She goes inside the alley to check who is calling her. When she looks back, she suddenly screams and falls as someone attacks her. On the other side, Asuka is seen watching Azusa being dragged around by a rope tied to her neck. While everything is happening Azusa's picture from the class group photo is seen getting blurred as she is dying. Back at the market, Sonata finds out that Azusa is missing. So she asks her students to stay together while she goes to the police station. The students are sharing their thoughts on Azusa's missing when one of them talks about the weird call she received yesterday, and how her death time is the same as was written in the message. As everyone is talking when Teriwa's phone starts ringing, when he picks up the phone, a voice that sounds like him says, What is it? You are kidding me. He receives a message after the call and saying that he will not die if he forwards the message. He tries to type a random email but it doesn't work. He notices that the call receiving time doesn't match the current time. One of the students says that his phone is faulty but he gets angry about that and goes into the bathroom. He checks his phone there and finds that the phone is displaying a video of himself which feels like live CCTV footage. He involuntarily copies his actions from the video. Soon he goes out where an electric wire disconnects from the transformer and gets wrapped around his neck. Later he is dragged by the wire into the alley where he dies from the electric shock. Asuka laughs watching all this while his picture in the group photo also gets blurry. Meanwhile, students find that Azusa is dead, and the police think that she attempted suicide by hanging herself. They are still confused about the weird call that Azusa received that night. One of the students reveals that she has a video of that time on her phone even though she didn't record it. So they watch the video again and notice a hand on Azusa's shoulder. One of the students says that she thinks the calls are cursed by their former classmate Pam who tried to end her life. While the others say it is not possible because Pam is alive so she cannot curse someone. 
Some students are convinced that it is a curse, while other jokes around about it. Suddenly another student Tomoka's phone starts ringing. She panics and takes out the battery and even breaks the phone but it keeps ringing. She starts crying desperately and runs to her room while her friends also follow her. She cries wondering why it is happening to her, but her friend comforts her saying it will be okay. Suddenly, the windows of the room close automatically causing all of them to get scared. Tomoka hears ringing again and finds her phone completely fine in her bag. She slowly takes it out and reads the message saying she will not die if she forwards it to someone else. She thinks about forwarding it to someone, while her friend tries to make sure she will not forward it to them as they are best friends. One of her friends Miju suggests that she should forward it to Sinchai, a timid student in their class. Tomoka is not happy about this but Miju says that it is better to kill someone else than die herself. Tomoka is still not happy with the suggestion and tells them that they should die for her as they are claiming to be her best friends. Soon they attack Tomoka by trying to snatch her phone, but after a lot of struggling she manages to push the forward button and after a few minutes Miju's phone starts ringing. A hand suddenly grabs her foot from under the bed, while the other three are forced to watch her die. After some time, Amiri comes to her fellow students and tells them that she talked to their teacher about the cursed phone call, but he doesn't believe it. Amiri then tells them that she has Mija's cell phone, and they all look at the message she received. They figure that if the message is forwarded to someone, it cannot be forwarded further, so anyone who received the message will surely die. As the new information sends another wave of panic through students, they insist that they want to go back home. Yoshitaka asks them to stay calm as the police are investigating the case. He says that the curse call is just a rumor. Yoshitaka then says they should not believe the rumor about the curse call but for the sake of their mental health, they should hand over their phones to him. A student named Takahiro doesn't want to hand over his cell phone and says that he won't know what he will do if he got the cursed call. Yoshitaka tells them that they are old enough to not believe things like that but Takahiro responds by saying that their three fellows died already and it is enough to believe the rumor. Later, Takahiro runs away from there without handing over his cell phone. The students still think it is Pam's curse and they ask Amiri if Pam already died or not. After listening to their concerns, Amiri decides to call Asuka. The phone rings for a few minutes and Asuka finally picks up the call. Amiri asks if she is really Asuka and if she is okay, but Asuka just talks without answering Amiri's questions. Asuka asks Amiri if she knows the chicken's pecking order, and then continues by saying that when they are locked in a small place they peck at the weaker ones, while the weaker ones only peck at the floor. She says she thinks people are the same as the weakest ones get pecked. But in humans, the bullies don't know that they will face the same things they did to others, like Azusa, Teruya, and Mija. Amiri tries to ask if she knows about the murders but Asuka just continues her talk. She says that people don't need specific reasons to peck at others, but they won't stop until the weakest one dies. Asuka then abruptly cuts the call even though Amiri tries to ask her what happened. After that Amiri soon receives a message from her boyfriend and goes to meet him. When she meets her boyfriend, he tells her that he heard the story about the death call before in Japan. He tells her that in the sign language meeting they attended. There was a deaf violinist there who told him that his girlfriend died because of a death call. When they find that someone else faced the curse call before them, they decide to search for it on the internet. On the other side, the boys are bullying another student in his room. They lock him in a closet and refuse to let him out despite his begging to let him out. When the boy suddenly looks down and finds a dead body there staring at him with open eyes. Terrified for his life he tries to convince them to open the door but soon his fingers start breaking and he loses his life. Back to Amiri and Jinwo, they seem to be searching the internet to find information about the cursed call. They find that the death call was cursed by a girl named Mimiko who was abused to death. They also find a video of Mimiko being bullied and figure that they are facing the same curse. Amiri says that she will call Asuka again, and just when she is about to press the call button, a girl named Mari comes in. She says that she was worried about Amiri. Amiri asks her to wait for a minute as she calls Asuka. While she is calling Asuka, Mari takes that time to go and talk with Jinwa. Jinwa who heard them talking about Pam asks Mari who is she. Mari tells him that Pam was their class fellow who hung herself and everyone thinks it is her curse. Meanwhile, Amiri talks to Asuka and asks what she knows about Azusa and Teruya. Asuka says tells Amiri to add Akaika to the list too. Amiri seems confused about her weird behavior and asks if she is involved in murders. Asuka tells her that she never cared about her before so why she is asking now. Amiri is bewildered by all this and asks if she knows Mimiko but Asuka doesn't reply and asks her to put Mari on the phone. When Mari takes the phone, Asuka repeats the same words from the message that she will not die if she forwards the message to someone else. And soon Mari's phone starts ringing. Mari shouts that she never bullied Asuka. But Asuka says that the ones who just watch the bullying without stopping it are the same. When the call cuts, Mari takes out her phone and is terrified to see the message. Mari suddenly runs out of the room and goes into the corridor where the lights go off and Mari sees a mysterious little girl. Amiri and Jin Wu follow Mari and go to the laundry room, where they find a student named Hiroyuki crying. Soon the lights come back on and they hear a thudding sound from a washing machine. They slowly go forward and find a dead body inside the machine rolling around. They look back to see Mari standing there, as she tells them that she forwarded the message to Minori. Amiri again gets a call from Asuka who says that she was thinking Mari would forward the message to her. 
Amiri is now sure that Asuka is sending these messages. So she begs her to stop doing that but Asuka says that she can't do anything, as Pam says it cannot stop. Asuka says that Pam is alive and is sitting beside her, selecting who would be the next one to die. Amiri asks how it can be possible. So Asuka says that she will let Amiri talk to Pam but the calls get cut suddenly. Amiri talks to her boyfriend and says that something is weird as Asuka says Pam is sitting beside her. Jean Wu says that if Pam was in a coma maybe she recovered and is with Asuka. Amiri says that it is impossible because Pam is not a separate person and it is just the nickname Asuka's classmates give to her. Jean Wu says that Amiri never bullied the girl and this might be the reason she only called Amiri. They decide to call the hospital to get information about Asuka. They find that Asuka is still in a coma. In the meantime, Yoshitaka is in the girl's room forcefully trying to take away their cell phones. When they refuse to hand over their phones, he even goes as far as abusing them and taking their cell phone even though Sonoda tries to stop him. During all the chaos, the teacher fails to notice that a girl is hiding in the bathroom. She is holding her phone which has the message that she will not die if she forwards the message to someone else. Yoshitaka and Sonoda take phones from everyone and leave the room. When they are in the elevator, Sonoda says that he is too tough on the students, as they are already scared. He asks her to hand over her phone too but before she could give an answer, the elevator suddenly malfunctions. Yoshitaka's phone starts ringing, and he sees a mysterious identity on the walls. When the elevator door finally opens, a group of students is seen standing there. They are scared to see their teacher dead but rush to get their phones from the bag. Students are fighting to get their cell phones from Yoshitaka's bag when suddenly Sanichi's phone starts ringing. He quickly runs toward his room while others chase after him. He locks his room while the students knock on his door asking him to open up. Sinichi forwards the message to one of the students who bully him, just as they break his door and come inside. Sinichi starts laughing saying that the bully deserved that while the bully starts choking as feathers come out of his mouth and he died there. After witnessing more deaths, Jinwu asks Amiri to call Asuka again because she may need Amiri's help. Amiri says Asuka will not ask for help from her because she hates her. She tells her boyfriend that at school, she was the one getting bullied at first, but Asuka helped her and became the target of bullies. She says that after Asuka starts getting bullied, she never helped her in the fear of getting bullied again. Jin Wu says that she should tell this all to Asuka, but Amiri still thinks that Asuka will not forgive her. Jaiwa tells her that the violinist whose girlfriend died by the curse call, became deaf because he was afraid to hear the death tone but he didn't offer to take the curse of his girlfriend and regrets the decision till now. He tells her that Amiri is also regretting that she couldn't help Asuka and she should just face it. Deciding to come clear to her friends, Amiri finally calls Asuka's phone and asks to put Asuka on the phone. The girl from the other side says that she is Asuka, but Amiri says she is not real Asuka. Amiri then starts talking hoping that real Asuka's subconsciousness is listening to her. She says that she wants to apologize because she always stood aside and didn't help her. She says that it is all her fault as she is the weak chicken. She asks Asuka to send her the death call, and they will finish it together. The real Asuka in the hospital is seen listening to Amiri and slowly comes out of her coma, while the fake Asuka's silhouette twitches revealing the little girl Mimiko. After the call ends, Ji Wu says that Asuka told Amiri that Pam is using the computer to send messages, so they can try to take her computer down. They start to work and post a request asking everyone to send a lot of emails to Asuka's address so her computer could be blocked. A group of students come and say that they want to help them. They also get a great response from the public as people from Korea and Japan start sending emails to the address. On the other side, after waking up Asuka goes to the secluded room where she finds a group picture of her class displayed on the computer. There she receives a call from Amiri, and they can even see each other on their computers. Amiri is glad that Asuka wakes up, and apologizes again while Asuka notices Amiri wearing the necklace she gave to her. She gets a flashback of the time they were great friends and Asuka gifted the whale necklace to Amiri, and Asuka also has a phone keychain same as the necklace she gave to Amiri. Asuka tells Amiri that she heard her in the hospital, and she is the one who did wrong as she killed all these people. Amiri tries to say that it was not her but Asuka says she remembers the feeling of clicking the mouse. Asuka says that she was scared when she tried to end her life and all this time of being in a coma she could feel that Amiri is sad for her so she shouldn't blame herself. As they are talking, the call suddenly cuts and the picture comes back on the computer screen. Asuka tries to stop herself but her hands move, controlled by some mysterious force to select the next picture. Meanwhile, Amiri receives the death call with the same message. The scene changes to Asuka who is suddenly transported to her school. She is in her classroom and she tries to get out, but the girl's spirit stops her as the windows and doors close automatically. Amiri who was also transported to the school hears Asuka screaming. She rushes to find her. Amiri finds that Asuka is about to take her life with the girl Mimiko, who is spreading the curse. She reminds Asuka of their promise of visiting the shore together and offers to die instead of Asuka. Before they could be killed by Mimiko, her computer is overloaded by all the emails and they are bother sent back to their previous places. Amiri seems to be back with her boyfriend Jiwoo and as they are saying goodbye to each other he snatches her phone and forwards the message to himself. Soon he is killed brutally in front of Amiri. After a few months of the horrible accidents, Amiri who has lost her ability to speak and walk after witnessing a lot of deaths visits the shore with Asuka as promised. Do you think Mimiko was right for killing people after getting bullied? What would you do if someone gives you a choice to kill another person or die yourself?
Please let us know your opinion in the comments and make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon so you won't miss more exciting movie recaps. Stay blessed.